the deadlift. The deadlift is fortunately the easiest of our five lifts that we that we do, except maybe the bench press. I don't know. Deadlift's awfully easy. It's real straightforward. If you do it like we tell you to do, it'll take you about two minutes to learn how to do it correctly. And if you do it like we're going to show you how to do it, this is the way the heaviest deadlifts in the world have been pulled off the floor. So it does work very well. All right, everybody get where you can see. Bethany's going to demonstrate for us. Okay, so there are five basic steps to this process, and you'll see how this works. It, it, it works very well for everybody that does it. Okay, so I want you to get in the middle of the bar, and I want you to line up one inch from the bar. Your shins will be one inch from the bar, this far. Now, this is interesting because this works for everyone, all right? We have looked at people with size 17 feet. You ever seen a 17? <laughs> like that. Looks like Same a card, as mine, right? Looks like a cardboard box. <laughs> no, you need to back up just a hair. Just a hair. That, no, it's too much. It's more than hair. you got thick hair. All right? And... We've looked at people with size four feet. Women size four, you ever seen one of those? This little baby shoe, it's about that long. We actually had a girl show up that could actually stand up <laughs> without falling over with a foot that was this long. It's the damnedest thing you've ever seen. It's about a third the size of the guy with the 17. But everybody that lines up one inch from the shin, that far, two and a half centimeters from the bar, will have the middle of their foot directly under the bar. Okay? So it's idiot proof. All you've got to do is spot that position right there. Now, once you have spotted this position, look down and identify what you see with respect to barbell and shoelaces. So you can go right to that every time without any drama. Okay, every time you're going to be right there. Okay, now point your toes out a little bit more. Good. All right, this is your stance. That's step one. Step one is the stance. Everybody does this exactly the same way. Toes are pointed out a little bit. And the shins are one inch from the bar. Now, if you get one inch from the bar and then you look down, what do my shins just do? They move back, right? So if you do that, you're not going to be in the right place, right? Because what you'll do is then move forward, then you stand back up, and your shins are too close, which would mean that the bar is behind the middle of the foot, and that's not what you want to do. The bar, the imbalance must be directly over the middle of the foot, okay? And now step two is going to be taking the grip. So what we're going to do, we take a grip, is come out on the knurl, and you're going to look at the knurl pattern on the bar. All of the bars in this gym are 16 and a half inches between the edges of the knurl, this, not including the middle knurl, the center knurl of the bar. The, the knurl comes to 16 and a half inches. So depending on your height, and your size, your grip will be somewhere just outside that line. And for Bethany, it's going to be probably her index finger is going to be right in the middle of that line. Okay, and that'll be the correct, just to put your hands on the bar. No, 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 I mean, the, no, no. I mean, your index finger on that nerve. Okay, here. Just like that. Come in a little bit. All right, so that's your grip width. Stand up without taking all right, no, don't take the bar. Just stand it. Now, we're going to take the grip at that width, and we're going to do it without bringing the knees forward. Now, your knees don't have to be locked in position, but they can't move forward. So we're just going to call them tight knees, okay, so that you don't intrude your shins forward into the bar because that's the next step. All right. 
So when you take your grip, also, you're going to take a double overhand grip, all right? So a prone double overhand grip, all right? People come up to the bar, you saw her just try to do it, come up to the bar, just automatically, because it's called a deadlift, take an alternate grip that's not necessary and it's not desirable. All right, and the reason it's not necessary or desirable is because if I have one shoulder in internal rotation and then I take a supine grip on the other shoulder, I've placed it in external rotation. Now I've got a shoulder position asymmetry, all right? Another way to think of that is I've got one hand in front of the bar and the other hand behind the bar. And this produces two different arm angles on either side of the bar. And there's gonna be an asymmetry. What we see is that the supine hand has a marked tendency to rotate forward away from that shin. You've seen that happen. If you pay attention at powerlifting meets where everybody takes just they have to because it's the law or some shit. They have to take a supine grip and what will typically occur is the bar rotates away from that side. Well, we don't want that because if it rotates away from that side, then it's rotating forward of the middle of the foot where everything's in balance. So that side's no longer in balance. All right? And it's much easier to do this if you will just take a double overhand grip on the bar. Now, this is easy and light weights. You ought to be able, everybody ought to be able to do a double overhand grip through their last warm-up set. If you're not capable of doing it through your last warm-up set, then your grip is not strong enough. Now, there are occasionally people with little bitty stubby short fingers. You don't have those. Or people with very short arms or some other anthropometric deformity <laughs> that wasn't caught, you know, early by the eugenics program. <laughs> and so you may have people wandering around with little Vienna sausage looking fingers that are about that long and they can't hold on to the bar. Those kind of people are not going to be good lifters anyway, so just get them out of the gym. Richie, Richie, get them. I'm sorry you can't stay here. Richie thinks that's really funny. Richie needs to leave now. <laughs> Richie needs to get the hell out of here. Okay. Now, because see, I'm joking, but Richie's serious. <laughs> He's serious. This is a form of racism. All right. It may be worse. I don't know. It might be worse than that. Okay. So when it gets real heavy, the the way intelligent people maintain shoulder symmetry is to hook grip. Now you can hook grip a deadlift. It doesn't feel particularly comfortable, but it doesn't bother me at all when you're uncomfortable. So we're gonna, I can't feel a thing. So we're just gonna tell you to take a grip that is a hook grip at the top, at the heaviest weight that you're gonna do. Now, if you just can't stand it, all right, and you want to take an alternate grip on the bar, then go ahead and take an alternate grip on the bar, but you have to be aware of the fact that the supine hand is probably going to want to track forward, which means you've got to pay extra attention to pulling that elbow back, all right? This is shoulder extension. This is shoulder flexion, okay? So what you have got to make happen is extension because that's what holds the barbell over the middle of the foot. And if the bar goes forward to the middle of the foot, you're gonna miss the lift if it's heavy enough. You can't pull a barbell off the floor forward of the middle of the foot. So what we're gonna do is just teach you to pull it from that position to start with. Without any preamble, we're just gonna pull from the pulling position that the bar has to be in to get it off the floor. And that is going to be a position of rather high hips. Okay, so what you're going to do now is you're gonna take that grip with the, same, with the width I just showed you. Leave your ass up in the air, okay? 
go ahead and do that. You're going to be there a minute, so just be patient. This is the grip. Nope, don't do anything but take the grip. Now, when you take the grip, do not roll the barbell. You're going to want to roll the barbell. Don't roll the bar. Because if you roll the bar, you just undid step number one. Okay? So here is step number two, and this is the grip. Are you even? Is that the same amount of bar in each hand? Good. Now, step three, you're going to bring your knees forward until the shin touches the bar. And then you stop. The hips do not move at all after this position. Most people in this step are going to drop their butt. Now, if you drop your butt, what happens to your knees? Knee bone connected to the hip bone, right? If you drop your ass, what are your knees going to do? They go forward. Unavoidable. They're connected by the thigh, by the femur, right? And if the bar goes forward, what happens to the position over the middle of the foot? Gets undone, right? See that? Just, and it's anatomy, right? So you're not going to move the bar during this step. And this will be the lowest position your hip is in. Now, in order to help with the low back step, which is next, you're going to shove your knees out a little bit into your elbows, just a little bit. Now, once again, don't drop your hips, okay? Just push out into the elbows to make sure that you're you've got some angle from the hip to the knee. All right, this is going to make room for your belly to drop down on this next step. Now the fourth step is setting the back. So Bethany's gonna lift her chest and at the same time, she's gonna drop her belly down in between her knees. But she's not going to drop her hips when she does it. <laughs> what you're gonna to try to do is drop your hips now. Don't drop your hips. You're going to pull this thing with the hips higher than you want them. And then the fifth step, she's going to drag the bar up the shins. Go. And then at the top, now this is everybody in the room is going to do this too. This is not finished. Lift the chest. High as you can get it. Touch my hand. This is the finish of the deadlift. This is the last amount of thoracic extension. Chest up at the top. And you can't cheat the thing by leaving your shoulders forward. Okay, everybody's gotten used to seeing that. But we're not going to tolerate that shit. We're going to finish the pull. And this is a finished pull. Look where she is. All right, chest is up. She is leaning back a little bit behind the bar because the bar is in front of her thighs, and that's the balance, right? Barbell's right over the middle of her foot. This is in balance. Now, we're going to set it down in the opposite order that we picked it up, which means that hips locked out last. So that means hips are going to unlock first. Bar will slide down, and then the knees going to set it down after the barbell crosses the knees. Okay? Now, step number five, pulling the bar up the shins, dragging the bar up the shins, is accomplished by you thinking about pushing the floor with your feet. It's an initial knee extension. Now it doesn't move very much, and as the knees extend, the hips also extend to the point where you will see on a deadlift, you will see the back angle become more vertical the second the barbell leaves the floor. The back angle is gonna become more vertical, but you're thinking about pushing feet down. When it gets heavy and you walk up to the bar and it's your third attempt and you don't know whether you can do this or not because it's real heavy, if you have a technical job for your brain to think about, like pushing the feet into the floor, then you don't have to stand there and go, this is heavy, because that's not productive. What you think about is what you've got to do, and that is push, push down into the floor, all right? So back up. Now let's do all five steps again, and this is what it's going to look like. Come to the bar, take your stance. And 
toes are out. You're a little bit too far this way. So make the same distance there. You've got to be even in the middle. There you go. Toes out a little bit more than you want them to be. That's good. And this allows for the knees to go out in the later step, in step number three. Okay? You make the grip. Make sure your grip is exactly the same every time. It should be no wider than necessary to get on the outside of your shin. See how your thumbs are dra going to drag? Go out another finger width. Right there is where you want to be. Now look at your hand. Take your, take, your, look, take your hand away from the bar and look where it is on the bar. See? Right there. Every time it goes right there. Now come up. Don't take your grip and drop your hips. They're two separate steps. All you do is take your grip. No, stand up. Stand up. You're too close. Right there. All right. Now, if you start off too close and your bar, the shin's in contact with the bar, then when you take your grip, the bar is going to be behind the middle of your foot. The bar has to be in the middle. You can screw this up two different ways. You can be too far away from the bar. Or you can be too close to the bar. You have to be in the right place every time. If you do this correctly, you will be, be repeating the same five steps with a very high level of reproducibility every time. So there's not any variance in the way you do each one of these pulls, okay? So let's make sure that she's correct. That's right. Now take your grip without bending your knees. Just keep them tight. Okay, don't move the bar. And we're looking at the plates, and if you move the bar, we can see it real easily, can't we? We can see that big plate diameter moving. Now, step three, knees forward to the shins touch. Stop right there, knees are out. Now, step four, squeeze the chest up, drop your belly down in between your knees, just like that. I want you to note that her elbows are covering the outside of her knees. All right? There'll be that overlap there, and if you don't have, if, if your elbows are in front of your knees, then you're in the wrong position. What that means is your, your hips are too high and your knees are too far back. So this is what we're looking for. Note also the arm angle. You see that the arm's not vertical. Everybody know why that is? It's discussed in the book at length. Okay? And the shin's at a little bit of an angle. All right? Chest up. Push the floor. Drag the bar up the legs. Just like that. And finish at the top. Just like that. Good. And down. Hips first, then knees. Good. Stand up. Step back. Let's do it again. And repeat all of the steps. Okay? Don't worry about that. You just be even with the bar. There's your stance. Good. Take your grip. Don't move the bar. Knees forward. Shins to the bar. Knees out. Squeeze chest up. Push the floor away from the bar. Stand up. And finish strong at the top. Good. And now one more. Each time we're going to repeat all five of these steps for the first set. Okay. Make sure the stance is correct. Learn to see the toe angle. Knees forward. Good. And down. Now, do one more, Bethany. Your hips are a little low that time. All right. Don't be too close. Be exactly right. Good. I think you're a little close. That's it right there. Good. Forward. Knees out. Don't know. You're dropped. Right there is the position. Okay. I want you guys to look at this real close. I want you to look at her arm angle, and I want you to look at her shin angle. I'm going to explain this in a minute. Okay. Now, drop your ass a little bit. See how that changed that picture? Raise it back up. This is what you've got to get used to looking at, all right? 
And I'm not, notice I'm not looking at her back angle, and I'll explain this in just a minute. All right, push the floor and finish at the top, good, and down. Now that's a nice finish, and you haven't been doing it like that, have you? Finish. Chest up, okay. Now, we're looking at her arm angle. You all noticed that her arms are not vertical. Does it seem logical that when it gets real heavy, her arms would be vertical? But there is not a, there is not a video of a deadlift in existence where if it's heavy enough, where the bar is hanging on straight vertical arms. It doesn't occur. It does not occur. Now there's a reason for that. The lats are what are going to control the barbell and keep it from flopping away from the bar from the shins. We want the bar over the middle of the foot, right? Because we have to have the bar over the middle of the foot. And if the bar is forward of the middle of the foot, the whole system's off balance forward. You can't do that. Right? So you have to keep the bar over the middle of the foot. All right? And shoulder extension does that. Okay? Now, shoulder extension is accomplished by the lat. Right? The lat is a funny little muscle that inserts on the humerus, but it inserts on the medial side, the armpit side way up high, up here by the shoulder, but in front, all right? The, the tendon comes around to the front of the humerus, like my fingers right there, coming through the armpit and around the front, and that's the direction from which it pulls back, okay? Now, that's one end of the lap. Where's the other end of the lap? Where? Thoracolumbar fascia is this big sheet of tendon that's down here on the lower back. And you've got uh, lat origin from T7 all the way down the spine to the pelvis. So you've got a big, wide triangle of muscle, but it's pulling on the low back. And when the weight gets real heavy, and you have to use your lat to control the bar and keep it from going forward, well, that's force on the arm end of the lat. Where is the other force being applied from the lat? In the origin, the low back. So it pulls on the low back, and guess what happens when it does that? Hips come up. So it's, it's kind of complicated, but there's lots and lots of reasons why we always see exactly the same thing off the floor. We see the shoulder slightly in front of the bar. We see the arm at a slight angle, maybe seven degrees, coming down from the shoulder to the bar. We see the shin at five to seven degrees, because remember the knees had to come forward to touch the bar and you've got to use a little knee extension to get the barbell off the floor, okay? So we always see those things. We see the barbell over the middle of the foot, we see an arm angle about like that, and we see a slight shin angle. Now, why don't we look at the back angle? It has nothing to do with what we're looking at. Nothing whatsoever to do with it. It's because of anthropometry. All right. If you just draw this in your mind, you've got long legs and a short back. If you are in a position with a barbell over the middle of your foot and your shoulder in front of the bar, what's your back angle going to do? It's going to be, your hips are going to be high because your legs are going to push them up. And your back angle might very well be quite horizontal. It won't be exactly horizontal, but it, it'll be a little bit of angle. And conversely, you've got somebody with little short legs and a long torso, what will their back angle be? Quite a bit more vertical, right? Can you see this geometric relationship? This is just geometry, all right? 
So if I try to coach your back angle, I might be wrong. Your skeletal anatomy is going to is going to sort out the back angle. So I don't worry about that. But what I have to see is your shoulders slightly in front of the bar. I have to see the resulting arm angle that is not vertical. And I've got to see a little bit of a shin angle because the bar is over the middle of the foot. What happens if I see too much shin angle? If your knees are too far forward, what do I know is wrong? I know the bar is not over the middle of the foot. I know the bar is not over the middle of the foot. Okay. What if I see the barbell behind the middle of the foot with your shins vertical? I set up too close. I can't control as much with a stiff leg deadlift as I can a deadlift, can I? So that geometry changes the relationship between your body and the, and the barbell as it comes off the floor. So that has to be correct. So we've got to learn how to look for the correct angles. Okay, now if you're going to video yourself at home, you have to know this. You have to know how to look for these angles. So you'll set the camera up at a position where you can see arm angle, shin angle, and hips. Okay? So that you can tell you're doing it right. So let's do it again. Set back your stance up. There it is. Does that look right? Rotate your heels in just a little bit. Let's, let's modify this. Sometimes it helps to get a little bit narrower heels and a little more knee angle. Okay. Now take your grip. Good. Same place every time. Knees forward and out. Squeeze your chest up. Push the floor away from the bar. And finish at the top, just like that. And down. Now, if you're doing this correctly, that's the way the deadlift will look every single time. Okay? Now, we just told you the five steps, didn't we? This is what's going to look like a couple of sets into the process. Step back. I want you to just come to the bar, do all of it in order. Toes out. Good. Good. Did you see all five steps being executed? Right. We didn't count them off, but they all got done. So after she learns how to do this today, what we're going to look for is that all of the steps get executed. We don't need to stop and separate them every time. This will just merge into a single process. Right? And it'll look just like that last one she did. Okay. All right, you guys all see this?